A super DAP is, it's more than just your good old DAP. Let's talk about, however, where we're at today. Okay. So today, if you need cross-chain communication, Oracle price sheets, automation, verifiable random functions, generally, this is separate protocols, separate projects, separate networks that provide these different things. And therefore, if you utilize them, those services, you, your smart contract platform is as secure as the weakest link in that design. And you have to manage a lot of different gas tokens. You also have to manage additional latency, right? And even more so in the modular stack, there's notion of layer twos. Layer twos that have a data availability, data availability layer, an execution layer, a settlement layer. Right now you have three extra layers and you still have to deal with external parties for Oracle crossing communication automation. So it's really difficult to maintain a smooth developer experience. Execution is not really guaranteed. The liveness guarantees your liveness, the system is going to work is now like dependent on so many other external parties outside of the unified system. You may have to manage multiple tokens to, again, it's slower for sure. So it's less secure, slower and cost more, right? That's not great. So what we're, what, so once again, this is just going through the issues. I'm describing the status quo. This is what's happening right now in our industry. And I'm I, to be honest, I get a little bit annoyed because I'm like, Dude, this is such a bad direction. We should not be going, despite what everyone's been telling you on crypto Twitter, this is not a good design, what I'm sharing on my screen right now. Extra layers for extra layers, extra tokens, extra just come on. That is a, not a unified integrated. They try to sell you that this is integrated. This is not integrated. This is de disparate. This is different networks. So if someone tells you that this is an integrated design, they don't know what they're talking about. So higher costs, because you have to manage both more coins, you have to hire more developers, there's different frameworks, there's different protocols you have to engage with, broken security guarantees and liquidity fragmentation across these different layer twos and layer threes. And it's, it's getting out of hand. People are even talking about layer fours, it's getting too crazy out there. <laughs> so I hope to be a voice of reason. Like that is a, not a great direction. Experiment with it, but in the meantime, Supra, we're going to do the 180 degree opposite. We're going to explain this in a second. So it's more expensive. It's not as secure and it's more latency, added latency, which means more time to execute. It also makes the developer experience a lot worse. Different frameworks, different languages I have to manage all these tokens. And now I have to go exchange these tokens and I have to go to a centralized exchange to get another token so I can go to a DEX and switch swap with another one. It's just getting to be, this is too much. So we're introducing a better way to build. And this is focused based on what we're calling super dApps, right? So how is the super dApp made possible? We define a super dApp is a network a product, product or application, a decentralized, decentralized application that needs one of the various popular smart contract languages and virtual machines, needs crossing communication, Oracle, price feeds, automation, on-chain randomness, or some combination of two or more of those in order to function. And if you use our services, because we have a shared security environment and an environment in where each of our services are also very low latency. Remember, we have recreated from first principles, each of these protocols. None of everything you see here is a fork. The only thing that we are bringing in from all the ecosystems is like the virtual machine. So EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, move language, move VM. Uh, Solana VM, Cosm Wasm, right? So that's the only thing that we are not necessarily innovating because we think, for example, Move Language has done a great job and we are making some iterations there. We think that the VM is basically what akin to JavaScript to Web2. So it's not, it's going to be around for sure. And, but the automation, the crossing communication protocols, bridges, the Oracle protocol, our randomness protocols, or other protocols that you guys don't know about, homegrown first principles, thank you. So once again, full vertical integration is instead of having all these disparate networks, one for data availability, execution, settlement layer, Oracle, price feeds, automation, VRF committees, all this stuff, we're saying, hey, actually we have a design where we can put it all together. Now I'll make sure I go through that just once more. But this is our kind of unique selling point and value proposition. Uh, moreover, this is powered by Moonshot Consensus. Moonshot Consensus has been formally verified. This has been worked on for over a year. And we just got another major accolade from DSN, where this is a top academic venue, where they've replicated our results. We'll let them run the code and they see that, yes, indeed, 
this does show what we told them it does. And we recently did a test on a global network of 125 nodes, tribes and clans architecture, running moonshot consensus to bring the data together. And from a throughput perspective, we're talking about 530,000 transactions per second in that much with, with latency of 500 millisecond optimistic confirmation and one and a half to two second full finality. This for this type of algorithm is considered the state of the art. So our team made this as well. So super comes with an incredible engine in addition to these Oracle service protocols that are also state of the art. So moving through this, we're offering multi VM support. So what's really cool is that applications that exist on other ecosystems already, they can largely re redefine Supra. So even if you are a you know, Ethereum based project or your project existed on Cosmosm, like a Tenderman chain, like Cosmos, or you're a Solana originating a application, or you think that move virtual machine is more secure and has wonderful attributes, and maybe you're building on Sphere Aptos, existing projects can also deploy on Supra. What's cool is they can take advantage of our zero delay automation service, our native Oracle price sheet, block by block availability, our on-chain randomness. So every block we generate randomness as well. So you have zero delayed randomness block by block. Moreover, a cross-chain communication protocol. We're, we're actually going to be rolling out and I'll be sharing a little bit more about this, but we're running a super DAP competition in a few months. We'll be sharing that soon. Once again, we should talk about the Supra's design and our architecture. So the tribe is the entire network. Now we do have a multi-tribe strategy, but we don't need that right now. One tribe is enough for the current state of, of uh, our, our industry, blockchain industry at the moment. So this tribe in this illustration is used for things like running moonshot consensus. So we need super majority consensus on ordering of transactions throughout the entire system. So all the clans within the tribe execute moonshot two thirds plus one at least. Hypernovas are crossing communication protocol. We also have them uh, sign off on those crossing messages. Now there might be optimization optimizations there. Uh, nonetheless, in the beginning we're, we've been exploring that the hypernova cross chain communication protocol, it's basically recomputing the consensus of the chains we interact with. So if we interact with Ethereum, we listen to their, um, basically their like client consensus. We can adjust the security guarantee instead of listening for only 67%. We say we wait for 80, 80%, which increases the uh, statistical probability that the like client consensus of the theorem nodes is correct. And then super itself as layer one also computes the next step. So when we communicate to the last destination chain, they're verifying super majority signature. So it's a very secure, it's basically layer one to layer one consensus communication in a way that preserves layer one consensus. Okay, so has super scalable while we're being able to service all these different services, right? It's because certain, the entire tribe has to run um, our consensus algorithm moonshot as well as cross communication. We can have other functions be executed. It's called execution sharding by other clans. Clans are a subcommittee, a randomized subcommittee of nodes. So the tribe is everyone and clans are random subsets. So you, every epoch we randomize the next uh, combination of nodes to pr provide this particular service. So this is how we get our shared security, by the way, is that all the nodes at any given epoch, you don't know what role you're going to play. You might even play more than one role. Here, like we can have one clan running our decentralized Oracle agreement price feed protocol. We can have another one running our VRF, verify the random function service, just constantly creating VRF requests and servicing them as they come in. What's cool about the VRF is we can service Web3 and Web2 that if you want to have a verifiable answer they can verify it was correct we can service that in a web2 manner as well move language virtual machine we're actually super as move based in our in our terms of like our governance virtual machine the system that governs Supra's kind of backbone so to speak is move based and applications for move language from the facebook team Aptos and suite teams um, we also think they've done a really good job there uh, once again thinking from first principles i've been following their work since late 2019 2020 and uh, it's, it's great to just be able to utilize it. And we're also going to be contributing to it. EVM, of course, another clan can be running. So one clan could be running move language applications. Another one could be running Ethereum applications. Another clan can be running Solana applications. Another one, Cosmosm. The key is that these are happening in par parallel in an asynchronous manner, right? And this is called execution sharding. 
Okay. And what we can do also is once we form a clan, we can also have the different clans, every cycle even, perhaps, change their role. So I might be running, for example, EVM execution and the VRF clan. I'm, I might exist possibly in more than one clan. That VRF clan might, in the next epoch, be asked to do Oracle data, right? And what's interesting about verifiable compute and Dora decentralized Oracle price sheets is that it's stateless, meaning we don't have to synchronize our state before I can do that activity in the next surface because we're literally in Oracle, we're collecting information from the outside world, running our computation process, and then creating the value and agreeing on the value and the publishing the value. So what's cool about that, and same with VRF, it's a cryptographic operation. We don't need to synchronize all our past memory and state to, to take on that role. So we do the rotation of clans as possible. One clan can be doing another service in the next epoch or even the next cycle. The clans themselves, the nodes within the clans themselves, remember you got a tribe and you have multiple clans. The nodes that make the clans themselves periodically, like every epoch, are also going to be randomized. And this is how we have the shared security. And this is how execution sharding is enabled. It's not just execution sharding of blockchain smart contract execution. We also do some of the execution sharding involves Oracle, uh, crossing communication, perhaps VRF automation, perhaps, and this so on and so forth. So this is what I'm going to record insights in terms of what, why one system can provide multiple things. And I want to reiterate this trend towards vertical integration. Okay. Now you have Eigenlayer. Eigenlayer is basically restating Ether on top of Ethereum to provide what is their use case. Their use cases are Oracle services, verifiable compute services, right? So price sheets, crossing communication, automation, data availability. This, it's very common that all those AVSs are different types of Oracles services. Remember, the Oracle problem is more than just price sheets. The thing is, though, <laughs> Most of those designs are mediocre because these are just some devs coming together. So let's build an AVS, but they don't know how to write a real protocol that can pass like safety and liveness guarantees. So just because you can build it doesn't mean it's built well. Whereas Sucrose, each of our protocols have been really rigorously designed and tested. So anyhow, Eigenlayer is an instance proving the notion of vertical integration. Let's see here. So we also have SWE. They're rolling out their own bridge, same validator notes, remember? So actually, let me mention over a year ago already in Berkeley, I had, I had a chance to meet Sharam, the founder of Eigenlayer, and we were just joking about, it's obvious that consensus nodes can be doing more, especially the Ethereum nodes. There's enough bandwidth, there's enough CPU for them to be doing more than one thing. That was the, his thesis in his approach and super had the same approach. Where, yeah, we also think the same nodes can be doing more than one thing. We're just figuring out how to do vertical integration in a different way, manner. You never had that in mind. Whereas we built our system from the get-go thinking about how do we vertically integrate more services into a single architecture. So once again, SWE is also rolling out the bridge on the same nodes. Aptos is roll, rolling out a verifiable random function. Some other chains are trying to do other, like Terra Luna, believe it or not, that project had, they rolled their own Oracle, which I, their protocol was mediocre, just so you know. But this notion that the validator nodes can be doing more than one service is, is very apparent. And if anyone asks you like why and how, you just tell them how much bandwidth does it take to actually provide that service. This isn't to work. We don't have to do a bunch of hash grinding. It's not energy intensive, right? It's not that CPU intensive per se. So a single node basically can definitely do more than one service. It can do consensus. It could do price sheets. It could probably do VRF at the same time. And it could probably do, can do virtual machine execution as well. So. What identify exactly that sweet spot? It's going to depend on how, how much demand is in the network. It's going to depend on machines available bandwidth and CPU. But bottom line is, I think it's very clear and obvious and self-evident that single nodes can and should be doing more than one service. It's more efficient, more secure, single token model. And this will lead to what we call super dApps. So super dApps are lower latency because it's the same system that's executing the same kind of activities. So it's faster, right? There's robust shared security through the kind of randomized tribes and clans architecture. It's a simplified developer experience because it's one framework or one system to work with. And it's one token. You don't have to manage a bunch of different tokens and cash tokens. And because you don't, you have one token for every operation and we're high throughput, things should be very cheap. We expect them to be less expensive 
than our competitors by far. So it's cheaper for builders and therefore it's also gonna be cheaper, less expensive for end consumers. So this is what we think vertical integration is gonna bring and that this is what makes your application a super application. Any DAP from any VM can deploy on Supers Layer 1 and leverage two or more of our services like Oracle prices, cross-chain communication, randomness, automation, and be considered and classified as a super DAP. We call that a, you, you now have super DAP uh, capabilities and performance. Let's talk about what kind of uh, superpowers can DAPs get on super natively. Imagine our stack enables the following. Imagine one system that had native cross-chain communication, native Oracle price sheet, had access to real-world data, had automation based off of the triggers, condition of transactions, had on-chain randomness, block by block, they were provided unbiased, unpredictable randomness. How good that would be for your game, right? High throughput, fast finality, multi-VM compatibility, cross-chain liquidity. That's another, imagine that. If we can, as super as the system can manage in a decentralized manner, uh, vaults across different ecosystems. And what if super also had this enshrined DeFi primitives and protocols that enable cross-chain DeFi and applications to tap into it in a composable manner. These are the types of things we're bringing to market. So let's look at some examples of super dApps. So the first one is, let's imagine a perp dex, okay, perpetual dex. So this is where folks can, so dex is a decentralized exchange. Perp dex is a system in which you can basically long or short with leverage different positions. Do you think Bitcoin's gonna go up? And if someone could, wants to match you, they say, actually, this time it's going to go down. And someone's able to also power through smart contracts saying, I'll also lend you the leverage to, if you want to double it, so to speak. These types of activities are being done on right now. They're quite popular, apparently. They also ultimately many times need Oracle data price feeds in order to achieve it. But what's cool about what we can bring to market that others cannot do is imagine we were able to, so we have smart contract logic, you can execute this in the uh, burst machine that you're familiar with. We have native price feed data. So block by block, you have access to the latest Dora and decentralized Oracle agreement protocol data. We're servicing over 500 data pairs from crypto pairs FX right now, right? For an exchange. Imagine you have access to our high throughput, low latency blockchain, smart contract platform, Oracle data automation. Now you can do things like perp decks. This position is supposed to trigger if I have basically uh, 84,000, just hypothetically, okay? And so on the, basically, if you don't hit that or the condition that the opposite basically bets that was made rings true or evaluates to true, to true, with the automation that we're bringing, we can decentralize in an automated, deterministic, transparent manner, execute the liquidation. These DEXs apparently make their money through, oftentimes they'll make some funds or these, these folks will make money from triggering uh, liquidations and like on the order of 1%. So if it was a million dollar liquidation, they can make $10,000 on there. But imagine with the automation network, since our nodes are operating this and, and, and triggering this, right? In a deterministic, decentralized, super majority requirement agreement, suppose that 50% of that liquidation fee immediately was sent to the application that created this. Right now, that application doesn't always necessarily collect this fee. Many times they don't. It's just these liquidation bots or these market makers or these, these algorithmic traders that are, that are getting and trying to sandwich, sandwich and do all these weird front running and MBV tactics to get that liquidation fee. That's been like one of the major issues. What does Super's automation network could get rid of that incentive? It executes deterministically if those conditions evaluate to be true. And imagine that liquidation fee, it's usually 1% of the total amount, goes to the application deterministically. Now the application has a revenue source, a clear revenue source, without having to play these MEV, Oracle, Oracle extractable or maximal extractable value games, right? So we think this is really interesting. The other the other 50%, maybe 25% goes to the node operators or the, and the other 25% goes to a decentralized treasury that the super network collectively manages. So we want to roll out this notion of decentralized network owned liquidity. We'll be talking more about that, but hear that again. We want to innovate this notion of network owned liquidity, like not just protocol owned liquidity, but the entire network has a decentralized treasury and over time governance will control how that decentralized treasury is utilized, like decentralized governance. So that's, that comes into some new, very interesting futuristic territory. Um, let's move into more super DAP use cases. So not only dynamic NFTs, ultra dynamic NFTs. 
So imagine a new class of uh, NFTs that aren't just reactive or customizable within with a few elements can automatically evolve with triggers that are based off of other blockchains or your own blockchain or real world events. And we're basically adding more dimension and simple things is, hey, look, it's raining. Okay, so let's suppose I have some that NFT and let's just suppose Super has a ba base seat NFT, right? Super has an organization that has a base seat, uh, 40 Yacht Club. Uh, NFT. Then imagine if we were able to customize it and say, "Hey, it's raining in uh, Hong Kong right now," and uh, we just make it look like it's raining. And it's changing based off of Oracle data from weather price feeds or weather data sources. Who knows? I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's a great idea or not. But I think what I'm excited about is that I'm confident that the uh, NFT uh, folks out there are going to be dreaming up some very interesting things. Like we provide the infrastructure, the capability, but what you end up doing it with it is going to be super creative. That we could never imagine. So we're looking forward to see what happens there. There's more universal cross-chain decentralized identity solution. Now I should just mention if we have, or has what we believe to be a world record or when we issue our token, when that is, I can't say exactly when, but we're working on it. We already have over 500,000 KYC participants. This should be a world record for a layer one, a launch with that many token holders, verified individual token holders in our airdrop program. So that's a world record. Quite positive. The only thing that comes close is WorldCoin. Now WorldCoin is a layer two. Yeah, there's when I say layer one with 500,000 or more verified accounts, this is, we believe to be a world record. But imagine a cross your world, if you had a single singular means in which you can manage your identity across multiple ecosystems, you could move your reputation or accrue reputation across different ecosystems, right? What's really interesting about in the future, we think that there is a world where you can actually leverage your on-chain activity and reputation system to get them like under collateralized loan. So blockchains today are mostly over collateralized. Like you have to put up extra collateral in order to borrow this or that. Right. And we think we're moving in an era where you can prove your behavior, on-chain behavior and reputation and borrow from the decentralized treasury at a better rate because uh, you can prove you, you're, that you've been a good actor for a long time. We're excited about that as well. We think in a world of AI data training, there's going to be data marketplaces across every major layer one. And Super can be a place to bless it together due to cross-chain data access kind of protocol, encryption, decryption, proxy, re-encryption type of strategies that can enable various data, inter interchain data marketplaces. Remember, Super is this like hub and spoke design with our cross-chain communication protocols, right? And we have two protocols, Hyper Hypernova, is very suitable for proof of stake layer one to layer one. Hyperloop is probably the best design possible for layer two to layer two. We call this Hypernova cryptographically secure layer one preserving crossing communication protocol. Hyperloop is a game theoretically secure, low latency, very novel approach as well. That kind of puts us in the middle of both layer ones and layer twos, which puts us in a really great position for cross chain automation. You have to have this design to do cross chain, multi chain automation. You cannot do this without like layer zero is one chain to another. That's it. Right. But if you gotta be hub and spoke to do cross chain automation, like the way we're talking about. Okay. Smart contracts can be utilized as what we call like these universal financial controllers, meaning smart contract on Supra can have awareness of different states and conditions and balances and then such across different blockchains. But, and when I say different blockchains, I'm talking about public chains, private chains, legacy financial systems as well. So this is an interesting era where we think there will be some, I don't know, they call it like CDFI, like centralized DeFi, decentralized finance, centralized decentralized finance. There will be things like this that emerge. There will be interesting things that can happen in Supra as this automation network, smart contract logic with access to state changes across different chains, legacy systems, banks, consortiums, et cetera, can do some very interesting coordination services. Super is also integrating our own DeFi primitives. So we have a liquidity network. I mentioned that we're building this decentralized treasury and we're going to have liquidity across different pools, across different chains. Um, Super also has a sort of an automatic market maker. We have a dynamic function market maker, which is promises to be lower latency, less incremental loss, less slippage, better execution, lower maintain security of any layer one. So we think this is going to be very an advancement to the more coarse automatic market maker, this will be a more refined, more nuanced protocol that can, once again, we think it'll mitigate incurrent loss and give you less slippage and better, ultimately better trades. 
This system will also have, for lack of a better term, a meta bank that can coordinate across these liquidity networks as such. So Super is enshrining a cross chain DEX, next generation dynamic function market maker and cross chain environments into the system. So when I say that we have 10 protocols, most of them are distributed compute consensus, verifiable compute type of protocols, but three of them are like DeFi related, taking advantage of our vertical integrated stack. So we're very excited about this as well. So DeFi super dApps, kind of diving into not just a super dApp, but a DeFi specific super dApp, we can do universal mark money markets. So the market is basically a place where you might want to take a borrow or a loan from a, like a peer to peer manner or whatnot, but they're usually confined to one ecosystem. Super can enable multi-chain money markets, a universal system that has awareness of liquidity in different places. So we think that a uh, multi-chain universal money market is going to be a very interesting use case. There's going to be, we're not only going to be the one, like some of you folks are going to create your own versions of this and sometimes tap into our treasury, sometimes tap into our liquidity pools and sometimes you won't, you know. Um, nonetheless, if your application needs to be uh, cross, has, you know, crossing communication awareness of state across different chains, automation triggers and smart contract logic, if you want that in the low, low latency, secure manner, Super is the only place you're going to get that. So we're talking about DeFi Super DApps at this stage. The next is crushing insurance protocols. So imagine you have a loan or, or some sort of security in one ecosystem, and uh, maybe there's some sort of uh, a guarantee that it will cover things in a different ecosystem per se. Uh, so blockchain, cross blockchain insurance protocols will, be, will slowly become a thing. Trust solutions, once again, setting up these, these transactions of um, if Bitcoin hits $84,000 on January 1st, 2025, midnight, exactly, and Ether's under 5,000, set these like arbitrage strategies through through the through our automation network at Supra. Interchain governance, maybe your chain, your project exists now in multiple ecosystems across different chains, right? My cat is scratching the painting on the floor. <laughs> we'll be okay. So... Interchain, cross-chain governance, right? Maybe your protocol existed on one ecosystem and went to another ecosystem. You have community members across different ecosystems. Super has this middleware intra ledger in the middle to enable like the accounting of this in a low-intensity manner, in a gas efficient manner. Same thing here. Suppose you have different collateral. I suppose some user has assets in Ethereum, Polygon, Solana, AVAX, some other Optimism, Arbitrum, different ecosystems. And I want to prove that, hey, I actually have the collateral here. Can I take out a loan here on Supra? So cross-chain collateral management systems are things that we can start to enable. Or rather, you guys using our tools can start to enable. We're talking about DeFi financial uh, super dApps that we think are possible and enabled now. We're not going to do all this. We hope you do. So uh, cross-chain asset management solutions, similar there, where you're able to say, hey, look, uh, here, um, you know, we are, we're getting a little bit low on balance on one chain vault, sell this asset on this chain uh, for this asset, maybe USDC, send it over to this chain and fill the vault and do this in there. Like this type of logic and automation and conditions can be achieved through automation networks, smart contracts, Oracle data, crossing communication. CBDCs are a topic that none of us really love, but basically it is what it is. So central bank digital currencies is central bank issued tokens there. They're, they have their issues for sure. But if they go to blockchains, and I'm just going to purely talk about blockchains being a permissionless, objective, neutral third party system, right? Our technologies could help do conversion across FX settlements, routing assets across your ecosystems. Whether it's CBCs or various types of stable coins, it's basically the same capabilities under the hood. We're starting to get into more kind of TradFi, the interesting things that TradFi is starting to get into. Maybe this is, these are the types of things that they're interested in. Suppose I'm a business and I know that I'm going to get paid and it's just, I don't get paid for 30 days, not 30 days. And I could really use some liquidity right now. This is what I mean by receivables. Imagine if I can tokenize my receivables, these will clear in 30 days and I can tokenize like 50% of them and there's enough trust around that and I can get liquidity in a shorter period. This is, is quite a big industry around that. Similarly, let's suppose banks, and this seems to be a big trend. I'm here in Hong Kong, a lot of bankers, HSBC, Standard Chartered, others are getting into and exploring blockchain technologies, right? And tokenized deposits, just like a commercial bank, they have deposits and maybe they can put that to work and create a stable point against that and do other on-chain activities, use this as these tokenized assets that are otherwise fixed assets to put to work. Yeah, there's gonna be interesting use cases that emerge from this sort of thing. So we do expect many unique super dApps to be coming out of builders that truly understand the power of super's vertically integrated infrastructure. You guys are going to build things that we could have never thought of. 
The purpose of this presentation is just to stimulate your imagination and show you that, hey, look, these things are becoming possible to build and you're going to want and you, you're probably literally going to need our infrastructure to have the best user experience and unlock a lot of value, especially in this multi-chain world. We totally think that our super dApps and that our stack, our vertically integrated stack that will enable super dApps that you guys build will unlock a lot of value for users Web3, new functionalities, capabilities, low NC, shared security, really just things that you just couldn't do before. I know that a lot of you folks had these various frustrations trying to use one network for Oracle, another network for automation, and not, another network for processing communication. But we hope to be this all-in-one, full vertically integrated stack, state of the art, in our algorithms in a low latency and therefore in a high throughput and therefore cheap, meaning inexpensive. We want to be really inexpensive. We want to be like Subhead if we can, right? We want to be the cheapest. We want to be the best, best, fastest, cheapest price fees. Best, fastest, cheapest processing communication protocol. Best, fastest, cheapest verifiable random function automation service. Best, fastest, cheapest smart contract platform. And we think that this will unlock a lot of value and that we are truly a next generation class of its own in terms of blockchain infrastructure. Yeah, with that said, that's the that's the kind of story about super dApps. Now what we're doing next is we're creating a super dApp competition. The competition will have judges, other venture capitals, VCs, folks from perhaps like any Mocha, maybe Google Cloud, other large institutions, probably some banks, et cetera, some folks from our teams, other KOLs. We'll have judges and they'll determine a like a basically a competition will do this every three months for the next year or so. What we can also get is, so not only access to possible investors, you might be able to get some, you know, um, investment or grants from Supra, our foundation. You can get, what we'll do is we'll put you in front of our half a million verified users, right? We can help you launch your DAP. We can help you with that because we can have, we had this Project Blast Learn to Earn program. We can give you an entire week of that exposure where our existing audience, they come back a lot. So most of you here probably engaged in our learner current programs, Project Blastoff. Super dApps that win the championship, uh, they'll get a week each perhaps, right? And we'll have incentives and we'll figure out ways that our community will continue to grow larger and larger. And we can drive users to your application, let people try it out. What else? The Also, depending on the protocol, maybe we ourselves can provide liquidity, our foundation, our ecosystem fund can provide liquidity in your different exchanges or DEXs or whatever it might be. Uh, we're really excited to see uh, you, what you guys all come up with. So this is going to be launching in about three months. The, the competition submissions will be open in about two weeks. And uh, we're really excited about this program because uh, we want to help support you build things that have not been possible to build before. Well, that's the end of our presentation today. We are a little bit over time. There's a lot to share. In summary, Supra is building a next generation blockchain. As John mentioned today, a KOL, KOL has described us as one of the biggest infrastructure plays he's ever seen in the space. And if we do this right, we, we do think this is global scale. And we think this will unlock a lot of value for the world. And we think we're confident we have one of the best designs possible here. So with that said, yeah, let's go ahead and move into any last couple minutes of Q&A that anyone might have. I know that we're already over time quite a bit. We might uh, keep this relatively short. Okay, so more scalable than modular ones. So I believe so. Yeah, that's a good question. Once again, our system of 125 nodes can handle on the order of half a million transactions per second in throughput. Right, that's talking about how much data can the network get through the system order, and uh, that's basically how these are counted. Now, in the integrate the modular world, right? What you have is, okay, I really want to emphasize the following. Supra also has built into our data dissemination protocol. We have data availability built in. And our DA built-in layer is outperforming Celestia. It's outperforming Eigenlayer already. And it's built in, just one of the things. So this is, in, you know, Supra is modular. Like we developed in Supra, after Solana, Sui, et cetera. We're actually, even though we're monolithic and we're vertically integrating, or at least Supra is, super vertically integrated. We develop in a modular fashion, any large scale, global scale software, each component is developed in a modular fashion. What has been done is folks are calling, they've taken each of these modular components, making it separate networks. So in my opinion, the answer is no, they will not scale more. If you want to preserve security and latency, they will not scale more. Okay. Any other questions? Good. 
Yes. So we have, okay, so it's a protocol by protocol basis, right? So we do, in our consensus algorithms, we do talk about the other algorithms that are similar to us, like the one that came from Facebook, the Jolteon, the Aptos was running. We also have comparisons of our Oracle. So when you remember each category is a little bit nuanced. For example, when you think about Oracle, what we have is a rotating set of committee nodes. The nodes will rotate and shift and randomize. But like Chainlink doesn't have that. Those nodes never change. They're static. They're small committees that are never changing. Now, so when you think about decentralization, we'll score higher on that level, right? Once we are fully mature, our, 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 like the designs are designed to be much more decentralized than better. I mean, that's security, if we use more node operators or shuffle the nodes, that should be greater. Latency, if we have, there are some things that we will end up being the same on, right? So there's certain things, but it's just, it's, there's many parameters to consider. Now let's talk about the crossing communication protocol. So you have layer zero, then you have Axelar, you have a Zeta chain, you have some others, right? And the way you want to compare that also is like, once again, like it, it, the comparison is different than consensus. It's different than Oracle price suits. In, in this case, what you want to really look for is how many individual agents, how many individual parties, if they collude, the system breaks. In layer zero is only two, Oracle or Relayer. They collude, it's over, game over. So the kind of uh, Nakamoto coefficient or collusion resistance number is only two. Let's say Axelar, let's say it's a hundred nodes, right? But then only 30 of them are using or running with a particular chain because not every single node, to my understanding, is running every single chain that they handle. So now that the number of agents in that is probably two thirds of 30, so 20, let's just call it 21. But 21 is way better than two. So Axelar is definitely more secure than layer zero, right? And then if you talk about super and if our network gets large enough, let's say 300 nodes and uh, of which 210, two thirds plus one have to achieve the state commitment agreement on Hypernova, well, that's 210 versus 21. You know what I'm saying? That's more secure, right? Now in terms of speed, we are very fast as well. And all of us are actually going to be faster, but in, in this case, it's about security. Now, Chainlink has, is going to be slower than I think each of our solutions. Chainlink CCIP, I think it's called, because they have three different networks. They have yeah, three different committees that are doing things and checking things with so slower, and it's probably going to be more expensive, but we think it's going to be secure. Whereas we think we, Supra, Hypernova is secure, it's faster, and it's a lower latency. Sorry, it's secure. It's basically layer one secure. So we think Hypernova has the security of our network, has a latency of a threshold signature verification or, or a multi -sig, large multi-sig verification. Now has the, so that's the, so that's the speed. And then it also has the economics of just like, it's just cheaper, we think. So and we're striving to be once again, the safest, fastest, cheapest solution possible in every protocol. So since Supra is, to be honest, it's uncomfortable to say the following because we are competing with everyone, every single system out there. Layer ones, oracles, layer twos, crossing communication protocols, automation protocols, bridges, et cetera. We're trying to compete with everyone because we think what's been done has been ad hoc. Ethereum did not have a layer two protocol design at the beginning because that's not what it was designed for. Layer twos were not part of the original plan. It was in its necessity because new layer ones like AVAX, Solana, in that era came out. And they really need to solve scaling Ethereum. But if you think about it, I believe it was 1,064 shards. They're going to do some bizarre uh, 1,000 plus shard to design, which is a bad design anyways. Then they pivoted to the layer two roadmap. My point is that these are necessities. These like are market pressures that force them to do these decisions. I don't consider them to be good decisions. If you were to rebuild the blockchain from the ground up, you wouldn't do it this way. That's what I'm saying. And we're not the only ones saying this. Aptos and Sweet came out. They're basically, so you have Bitcoin there. Bitcoin is like the first generation blockchain. Ethereum is second generation blockchain. Solana EFX are third generation blockchains. I consider Aptos Suite, let's, I, I, I consider them 3.5. Like they, they did really great work. Uh, and then I think Supra, with this full vertical integration of multiple services, just one, I think we're a true fourth generation blockchain. Yeah. It's basically not only do we compete with our competitors, we actually think we outperform them all in every category, at least nine out of 10. And that's a bold statement. But the thing is we got the data and we have the protocols and I should look into it, but that is at least our aspiration to be the 
highest throughput, lowest latency smart, low, excuse me, highest throughput, lowest latency smart contract platform. To have the best Oracle cross chain price sheet design, automation design, on chain randomness design, we strive to be the best in every category. So that's that's our answer to your question. Okay, it's getting late here. We have another uh, webinar series next Wednesday. If there are questions, do reach out to us on uh, Twitter. Feel free to bring us to um, Twitter uh, x.com, super underscore labs. Make sure you get the right uh, uh, X account from us. Just throw us some questions. We'd be happy to engage you there. Yeah, the truth of the matter is our ambition truly is to be the best infrastructure possible. It's a new, it's a new uh, inevitable design, we believe, but it's the true iPhone experience. The iPhone is vertical integration. And when you vertically integrate large screen compute, storage, camera, GPS, Wi-Fi, telecommunications, one device, now you can do new things you can do elsewhere. Similarly, we think the same thing is gonna unfold that super. That vertical integration of high throughput layer one consensus, price suites, cross-chain communication, automation, on-chain randomness, verifiable compute, single infrastructure. And we think this will be unlock a lot of value. And one last thing I want to mention. When someone asks about, can we compete the modular chains? Now, the thing is, Super is going to be talking about this very soon in one of the weeks ahead. We are going to enable a new technology we call containers. Containers are basically a layer two or subnet or pair chain on Super's layer one. It's a logical uh, partition. And it's very interesting technology, but we're, for now, we're not going to share more there. But when I tell you that Supra's team, led by folks like Dr. Kati, Dr. Joshi, right? We <laughs> went really deeply into these conversations for years, designing this for years. We are really emerging now with something that we think is, just has strict advantages over everyone else. So thanks so much for tuning in. We'll have more conversations. See you all next week, May 8th. Take care.